Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I get asked an awful lot what the effects are of inbreeding snakes. So we're gonna take this time and we're gonna cover that topic. You're watching Snake Bites. The two things I wanna talk about when inbreeding snakes are the reasons to inbreed snakes and the effect it has on snakes when you do inbreed them. First and foremost, the most common reason to inbreed a snake is to concentrate a phenotype or a color mutation like this albino or a piebald or a caramel albino, which are all early examples of recessive morphs that came in out of West Africa. Now, when you got these animals, you had no choice but to then take them to a normal ball python and produce normal looking offspring that were heterozygous or gene carriers for that specific phenotype or color phase. Once you raise those babies up, you really had one of two choices. You could either breed it back to its parent or you could breed them to one another, thus inbreeding the snakes. Very similar to the recessive morphs that we just talked about were the co-dominant morphs that came in shortly thereafter, like the pastels, the mojaves, the cinnamons, just to name a few. When you bred those to normal females, 50% of the offspring came out looking just like the adults or the phenotype that you were looking for. Once you raised up those babies, you would either breed them back to their parents or to other siblings in order to get a 25% super form. Another reason for inbreeding is isolated populations. Take for instance this Pueblin milk snake, which is actually a Lampropeltis triangulum cambali. There was only 13 animals ever brought in to the country as founder stock. So all the tens of thousands of babies that have ever been produced are related to those 13 original animals. This is another example of a recessive trait in the colubrid world. This is an albino Arizona mountain king snake. We had the very first one. We had to raise it up, breed it out, breed the siblings back to produce more albinos. The idea is to concentrate the phenotype or color phase while still maintaining genetic diversity. And how you do that is to continually to outbreed animals into new gene pool and any reputable breeder will continue to do that. Inbreeding in the wild is relatively common, especially in areas where there's isolated populations. Most studies say that the first one or two generations has virtually no effect on the offspring of the animal. But once you get a few generations in, you'll get smaller clutch sizes, more infertility, and higher percentage of malformed babies. Check out that over there, man. Mm-mm. Pretty damn hot. Let's go say something to him. Man, I know her, but I don't know her too well. Dude, she's your sister. Who knows her better than you? Man, I'm scared to. Stop being a Get your over there and do it. Man, I'll give her a shot. Do it! I'll give her a shot. Get over there and do it. Hey, sis, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, brother. How are you about yourself? I'm doing pretty good now. I was thinking, what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm thinking about coming home and watch some TV, so on a little bit. I was thinking about uh, asking you to go to the county fair with me. Sounds fun. You know I love a fair. Can you wear that sexy dress you know I love? Ooh, my favorite dress. You know I love that dress too. I'm thinking I'll be here about 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock sounds fine. 8 o'clock tomorrow night. I see you, sis. Hey, bro, she said yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, going to the date, man. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, we're going to the oh, bacon, we're going to the fair. Nice. Don't let me down, we got to keep that family, you know what I'm saying? I will, brother, you got to live keep that family, bro. Go get yourself spruced up a little bit. All right, bro, tomorrow night at 8! Good night, sweetheart. Good evening, and welcome to the wedding of Dorothy Ann and George. Let's all welcome the couple now. Now, George, do you take your beautiful sister, Dorothy Ann, to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Dorothy, do you take your brother, George, to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may now kiss the bride. Look y'all, inbreeding isn't so bad after all.
There was a study in Sweden on the Vipera burris adder, which was an isolated population. In 1983, there were 25 known males to exist. By 1995, only four of those original males were still in the population. Three years prior, 20 marked males from a different population were introduced to breed with the local females. Four years after, they removed eight of the remaining marked males, yet the viability of the offspring had dramatically increased over the same time period. This study clearly shows that the introduction of new gene pool to a population increases the percentage of viable offspring. On this week's Comment of the Week, on the Dorothy and the Boa episode, the question was, what's the perfect amount of kids? User, down to your last 33, said, Great video once again. Never fails. I don't have any kids yet, just a bunch of snakes and an English bulldog. Hope to have some one day, but the number of kids is kind of a touchy thing. Family income, the amount of time willing to be spent with them, etc. Just as long as you're willing to be there for them. Oh yeah, Octomom should be put to sleep. I agree with you 100%. It is different for everybody, but I'm not so sure that I agree that we should put Octomom to sleep. Make sure you guys keep giving me creative comments, and I'll feature you on a future episode. This week on Product Review, we're going to take a look at Coco Soft, which is a bedding product made by Blue Iguana. It's made out of coconut husks. The thing I like about it is there's no dust, it keeps the humidity high, and the odor low. If you're looking for a product like that, I think this is going to work for you. I'm giving this a 9 on the Snake Bites rating scale. Alright guys, it's Cal's question of the week. Now, today I'm just going to a little bit about political correctness. I've had it up to here. i have fed up with it. I mean, I can't take it anymore. The kids can't say Pledge of Allegiance in the school anymore. You can't have the Ten Commandments outside the courthouse. There's no more Easter break or Christmas break. It's all winter or spring break. I mean, when's it going to end? When are people going to realize that we can't please everybody? It's just never going to happen. I want to know what you guys think about this. Text or video comment below. Let me know what you think about the whole idea of political correctness. So there it is. I hope you guys learned a little bit about inbreeding and realize that it's really not that bad unless you don't introduce new gene pool. The forum I want to shout out to this week is creeperkeepers.com. It's put on by my good friends over at Monster Snake Forum. Gotta check it out. It's a cool place. This has been Snake Bites.